Wednesday and welcome into episode numero dos of What's Sports First. Dos means two, Kevin. You've lived in Miami for a couple years now. We got to get you up on that Espanol. And it's day two of this week's Champions League. Champions! Buzzing for today. What a day it was yesterday. Bring it on today as well. Yes, Some and on our agenda today, we love a little bit of a crisis here at Sports First. But who is in the biggest downward spiral after yesterday? Is it scoreless Madrid or... Snooze Fest United. We investigate, then we'll look ahead at today's matches, the Battle of the Hipsters with Liverpool taking on Napoli and Tottenham against Barcelona. Will Spurs pull a Spurs cup? Yes. We predict. There you go. <laughs> and we say happy birthday to the Lion God himself, Zlatan. All hail Zlatan. While also looking into his possible return to Europe, that's in the rumor mill. It's going to happen. Oh, Sports Burst starts right now. Champions League loss in Moscow while Manchester United put the world to sleep with their nil-all draw to Valencia. You're harsh. Mm, Real Madrid have now failed to score in five hours and 19 minutes of action while United were booed off at Old Trafford and Mourinho is still the Red Devils' most hated man. The question is, who has it worse? Lopetegui or the Mo Man at the moment, Kev? It's the Mo Man at the moment. The Mo no Man. No question about it. Look, Lopetegui's just come in, even though it was a bit of a crisis at the World Cup crisis. with Spain. Disaster for him. Uh, and it's been a disaster in many ways that they felt they could be so ignorant, Gabby, to go into a season and say, hey, CR7, you score an average of 50 goals a season for us, but ciao, ciao for now. All the best. We don't need to replace you. Yeah, we're, we're good. We'll just get Mariano and give him your number oh. seven and all will be okay. No. 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 Not the case at all. Cristiano Ronaldo is missed big style. Karim Benzema now six games without a single shot on target. That is mystifying. Absolutely. So, so for Lopetegui, yeah, he's got a bit of a crisis on his hands. You lose away in Moscow. But it's still a group that after beating Roma at home comfortably by three goals to nil, I think they'll cruise through the group. For Manchester United, however, I can't see them getting out of the group. And, and, and I know it's a bit of a statement to say that, but Valencia should have won yesterday. Yes. If Gonzalo Guedes, is my Portuguese pronunciation okay? A solid. Oh, Gonzalo he Guedes. needs to get better with his one-on-ones because... <sighs> he, there's a little bit of the early days of Cristiano in him in that he works so hard to create certain opportunities and then he fluffs his lines in the latter stages. Uh, but Valencia had opportunities, Manchester United, porous at the back, uh, just not good enough all no. around for Mourinho. And there's a toxic atmosphere. And for me, it's time to go because it's not going to get any better. So you would let Mourinho go right yeah. now? Ray says no. Ray Hudson was on the extra yesterday and he said no. You've got to keep them in as long as they're in the Champions League. My fear is that it's so toxic. Mourinho's the, the most pig-headed, stubborn guy you'll find. It's only going to get worse. He's not going to give anything to the players. So it's, it's only going to get worse. And vice versa. They're not going to give anything for him, which we see them playing. They're not exactly playing for him. And what if they, it, if they, if Manchester United don't make a decision before it's too late, they could find themselves out of the Champions League because of Mourinho. They're 10th in the, in the Premier League right now. Yeah, 10 After points. a shocking start, their last four games without winning, you lose in the Cup to Derby County on penalties. This is a bad, bad time. He, had the, he has the, the same record that David Moyes had in his little time at Old Trafford to start the season after eight games. The same record. Moyes lasted eight months. There was a much better feeling after Sir Alex Ferguson had won the title the year before. That feeling is not there now. No. Mourinho didn't get to bring in Alderweireld, didn't get to bring in Perisic, but are you telling me that this team would be so much better if they had those players? No. Not and it having it. No, absolutely. And what's even more concerning is the month of October that they had. They play Newcastle, then they're at Chelsea, then they have to play Juve, and then they wow. have to take on Everton. I can't see Mourinho picking up guaranteed wins in any of those. And if they lose, though, they have serious repercussions in both the Premier League and the Champions League. So I don't know. Hey. Tick Host tick here, tick get tick off the tick fence. Tick tick You're Portuguese. You're going to defend him here? No, should I'm he not stay or should he go? Him. I'm a huge Mourinho. I've defended him uh, probably until this point, but the ship has sailed. There's no, there's really no going back for Mourinho. He's lost the plot. There's nothing to defend. He He's oh. poor in, in press conferences. He doesn't know how to lead the team. I think the only place that'll have him after he gets fired from Where? Manchester I'm United nervous, I'm nervous. is Where? Portugal. He'll have to go back to the serious? Premier League. Yes. You Where do you think he's going to go? Who would take him after, after the job that he did at Manchester United? Not I. Aston Villa? <laughs> he'll, he'll be the next coach of Sporting. Watch. He's not going to go That's, there. Yes, No, watch. he'll take a national Just, team. So let's hop over to Real Madrid right. then. What do Real Madrid do to fix their goal scoring crisis? Do you know the last time that they went three games without scoring? 
2007. Correct. And that was... Hashtag up to Gab. Means that that's never happened with Ronaldo on the team. Ronaldo joined in 2009. Oh, they never went three games without wow. scoring in the Ronaldo era. He leaves. Here we are. Great point. Look, first and foremost, this goalkeeping situation's gone a bit too far. I think Kaylor Navas did wonderfully yesterday. Nothing he could do about the goal. It was shocking from Tony Cross, the ever reliable Tony Cross as well. Varane was a little bit suspect at the back too. But going forward, they need goals. There's no question about it. You don't score in back to back to back games. Your issue is scoring gold. Benzema's fluffing his lines. Marco Asensio is not producing when it matters for Real Madrid. He scores big goals at big times. But when it's mattered this season, he's hiding. And I know you're a big de Asensio defender I am. Uh, when it comes to this guy. Gareth Bale injured again. It's the same old story for Real Madrid, only this time they don't have the dark invader, as Ray calls him, to produce at the moments that matters. They need to, they need to spend in January. So who would you prefer to be at the moment? Who has it worse? It's Manchester United or Real Madrid? It's unquestionably Manchester United because Real Madrid can turn it around and Real Madrid are very much in a title race. United are over when it comes to the Premier League already. They finished second last year. It's not going to happen with Sarri at, uh, at Chelsea and it's not going to happen with Klopp at Liverpool. So, John Alamadrid saying, we'll hit the comments here for a bit, Cross is the reason we lost. Oh, come on, John. John. John Cross is the reason that that goal happened and Varane yeah. is Osh also partially to blame. But Cross is the reason that goal happened, but Cross is not the reason that Mariano hit the post that Benzema hit the post, that they haven't been able to score in three matches. This is a bigger problem, John. So, I reckon Real Madrid were unlucky, all things considered. It was 35 games the last time that CSKA Moscow kept a clean sheet in the Champions League. So, Real Madrid peppered the goal. Very unlucky. But there's no way you can simply blame Toni Kroos. I blame everything around the club right now, as well as them being a little bit unlucky. But no Isco, you had no Gareth Bale, no Marcelo, no Ramos. That That's a, quite a strong injury list. No, absolutely. And and we do need to give Lopetegui time. I know that it, seem, it appears like we've given him enough time, but it's only been nine games since the beginning of the season. He is still instilling his system. We do need to be a little bit more patient with Real Madrid. And they're not out of anything yet. They're top of the league, tied with Barcelona. They're in second. but And, and they're okay positioned in the Champions League. They're in third. Obviously, that was a shock loss. But I think they're okay. I think oh, I, I would agree with you. I, I know we're talking Champions League, but let us know who you think will win La Liga this year because Ooh, I think it's wide open. Yeah. Yes. I've gone with Atletico Madrid from the start. I'm going to stick with it. So let's move on from the past and let's bring ourselves to the present. You know what today is, Kev? Give me the present of today. What is Hipster it? day. Loafer wearing, book reading at halftime fans will be at war what? in bars all around the world today as the battle of the hipsters is in full force in the Champions League. Napoli take on Liverpool, Dortmund take on Monaco, while Barcelona face Tottenham. That's a not Tottenham a hipster game, is it? No, but this is a Tottenham side that is without Dele Ali, Serge Aurier, Moussa Dembele, and Christian Eriksen, just to name a few. But luckily for Pochettino, he can field all the players he bought this summer in those plays. <laughs> good one. Yeah, that's a good one, guys. Soccer <laughs> jokes. Yay. So you know obviously why? Pochettino you know why didn't buy anyone, yeah. and now he's in an injury crisis because this is what happens when you don't buy anyone this, over the summer. This is grinding your gears. I can see it. It this is. is I don't annoying. understand. You're How wearing you... your Spurs white. So am I. And, and, and they didn't sign This is no anyone. indication of what I think today's scoreline is going to be us and white. I think Barcelona do you know how, will do it. Do you know how many other teams in the Premier League era since 92, 93 have gone a full summer without signing anyone? Is this the number? Yes, it is. That is the number. What were you thinking, Bocchettino? And now, well, it's, do you think now is the time that it's going to come back to bite him, or do you think they're going to be okay? I don't think it's biting him. I think it's biting Daniel Levy. Daniel Levy was the one who said, there's money put aside. It's not all going to the stadium plans. There is money in the kitty. And Pochettino had his players and simply couldn't get his players. So I blame Daniel Levy there. For Spurs, here's where they go down and out from the Champions League today. Because Barcelona and Leo Messi are coming in as one big angry beast. You're telling me you drop Busquets and Messi in the same game? That's ridiculous from Ernesto Valverde. I don't think it happens again. They were wearing their... They, did you see Barcelona getting off the plane, by the way? I... Did you Can, see? Finally, they look presentable. Ah, they look like they're going for their first day at school, no, I'm Gabby. I'm sorry. Ha, did you see the a denim on denim kits back in the day? Shocking. Shocking. These are a little bit better. It's not my favorite, but at least they look semi-presentable. No, to me, it looks like their first day at school. They look really nervous getting off the plane. And, you know, they've got that little bit of trepidation. They don't want to say goodbye to their mom at the door. I, this I, is a really elaborate story. Yeah, no, I, I didn't like it. But look, fair enough. Let them have it. I think they're going to go to Wembley and they're going to rip Spurs a new one. They're going to go after them and win the game. And then, so this pretty much means the end of the road for Spurs because they lost to Inter in the opening match. So... I think Do so. Do you think that, that, that yeah. this means that the Champions League is over for them? Well, well I'm going to throw you another curveball. Hmm. I think in the other game today, I think PSV are going to beat Inter. Oh. Yeah. 
and that will throw this group wide open, and that will help Tottenham Hotspur. Okay, let's hit the comments here. So you asked um, our people to, pre- uh, to predict who's going to win La Liga. Jay Faye saying Barcelona winning. Guess who we have second? Sevilla. Yes! Jay Faze, we like your pick. Sevilla on Fueguisimo hey, fire. Uh, uh, a little test for Gabriela Amado. Who is winning the Pachichi race right now? Andres Silva. <laughs> seven goals in seven games. What a guy. Best eyebrows in world football. Jorge Wolf Hurtado saying wide open. This might be Sevilla's year to win La Liga. So oh. for all of you who are who have been watching La Liga with us game in and a game out, Sevilla are absolutely on fire. Do you yeah. think that they can do it? I don't know if they're going to win it, though. Playing great stuff. Sexy football on their machine. They Playing are. really well. Ryan Moran saying, if Barcelona lose today with Spurs, this will hurt. Then Messi is is right and the defense needs to wake up. So I guess he's saying that Messi can't carry this team forever. Well, if Spurs win and if PSV win, like I say, then you've got four teams on three points. And then this group is... The group of death. Dun, dun, dun. Which, honestly, you never really predicted that this would be the group of death. Uh, I don't know. Well, Liverpool, Napoli and PSG. Correct. Which PSG are bottom but, of that table and they play today also. But the kicker is, in that group, you've got a really weak side. Uh, and I think in this one, you've got four really good teams. PSV, pretty perfect so far in the Eredivisie. Obviously didn't look good against Barcelona when they were thrashed 4-0, uh, but then again, who looks good against Barcelona? <laughs> but now, Ray Hudson made a really good point, and I think I think he, he also has said this to you, that Barcelona seems to be missing something. Despite them looking so strong and so good, they're still missing something. Do you get that sensation also? Do you know who gets that sensation too? Who? Leo Messi, because he's come out publicly and he's criticized the defending of the team, saying that it needs to be better, and guess who had an issue with that? Gerard P.K. So Leo Messi and And there P.K. seems to be a little bit of tension yeah. in that dressing room. When there's tension and when there's decisions made by a manager that the players don't necessarily agree with, you're going to have tension throughout the whole squad. So a win for them at Wembley today, we'll put it right. And I remember a famous game for Barcelona with Leo Messi at Wembley where they absolutely destroyed Manchester United in the Champions League final. So Leo Messi's played brilliantly there before. Jay Faze is predicting a 3-0 win for Barcelona today. That's that's a bit much, I think. Jay. I think I think it could be a really good game. I'm going to go with... Uh, I'll go 3-2. Oh, wow. Yeah. You think Tottenham are going to get two past Barcelona? Barcelona are porous at the back. Okay. And no, they're without no Samuel Umtiti. Yes. Correct. Who, who, if you guys missed the last game, got a red card, two yellows, and he's out. Anyway, moving along. Do you know whose birthday it is today? I am Zlatan. I am Zlatan. Yes, King Zlatan turns 37 today. And we have a little bit of news. He came, he saw, he went on TV, he scored some golazos, he conquered MLS. And he may already be on his way out as Milan are calling for his return to Serie A on a possible January winter move. And this is the beginning of Zlatan's American adventure, or is it, Kev? The beginning and... Do you know what? It's a curious one for me. I do think it's going to happen. I think there's a lot of weight to the rumors that are being thrown around okay. right now. Zlatan will want to go back. He sees the struggles of a club that he absolutely adores. And he also loves Gattuso, who's the manager there right now. They've played together and they'd love to work together again. Zlatan feels he's physically, um, he's just that imperious character where he can go there and he can perform well and jump straight back into Major League Soccer. I think this is where the biggest problem lies. Aside from the fact that it's a marketing disaster for MLS, I, I think because you can't have the most marketable player in the league and maybe the best player in the league who turns 37 today, happy birthday Zlatan, go away and continue to play at a really good level and then jump back in missing two or three months of the season if we're to believe reports. Now, if he comes back for the start of the season, I have less of an issue with this. So for him to come back in the start of the season, that would mean he returns in March. Yeah. Which means he's gone for two months. But you still miss... You still miss the entire start of the season, and, and you're going to miss a new coach, most likely at LA Galaxy. The, the Ziggy Schmidt was was let go recently and walked away, and, and and now they're going to bring in a new coach. So all your preseason planning and the way you want to play as a unit goes out the window when the fella who leads your attack and is your is your focal point up front misses the first few months. I think it's detrimental to the team. And it's essentially publicly putting MLS on his back burner, which probably isn't a good look for anyone involved. And he's kind of done this already by not wanting to play on turf. He said, I have an issue with that. Yet, if you go to the playoffs, I'll play on turf. And I understand that as well. He tore his ACL with United not so Injury, long ago. Yeah. So he wants to look after himself. But missing Zlatan in key games just because it's on AstroTurf, when you knew this was the story in MLS before you joined, right. it's a bit of a problem. Yeah, and you actually touched on his um, relationship with Gattuso, who said something really interesting in a, in a press conference. I'll read it here. In terms of character, it's a lot more stressful to train with Ibra. Zlatan raises the tension. Pipita, on the other hand, is always willing to make his teammates smile. 
talking about Iguain. Yes. <gasps> so he just compared wow. Zlatan and Iguain, saying Zlatan raises the tension in training while Iguain makes us smile. Ah, uh, here. Poor old Iguain. Can we just spare a thought for Iguain? Poor old Iguain <laughs> wins the Campo Canieri a couple of seasons ago, all right? Then Poor he goes Iguain. off. He's blamed for everything in Argentina. Then he gets kicked out of Juventus because a fella called Cristiano comes in. Now he's going to get the boot from Milan because a fella called Ibra comes in. Just you know, be careful who you go to next, Iguain. I know. Poor guy. But he is back. He should be back for um, AC Milan to play against Olympiacos tomorrow. So that's exciting news for AC Milan and Gattuso. But I think this will overall be an exciting move for Zlatan. Not a good one yeah. for MLS, but I think one that he will enjoy, and who would have thunk it at 37? And I think it's a perfect league for him. Very tactically astute league. It's difficult to score in, but Zlatan's been there before with both Inter, with Juve, and with Milan as well. He's a legend. He just scored his 500th goal uh, in, in, his inter, in, his, in his club career in the most spectacular of ways against TFC when he did that roundhouse kick. He, he's ridiculous, and I just never want to see this guy retire because he's wonderful news for both Major League Soccer and for whoever else he plays for, and long may continue for Zlatan. And a self-proclaimed god, so who wants to see him go? Kev, what are you doing at 7 o'clock? The Extra. You are home for the beautiful game. <laughs> well done. Be sure to tune into The Extra at 7 o'clock with this guy with, for a full UCL recap Guess of the day. Guess who's on the show today? Hmm. Bobo Vieri's on the show Bobo. today. It's going to be a cracker. And some emojis, I think, too. Yes, so you guys won't want to miss it. That's it for Sports Worst today. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, ciao, ciao.